this should be good. Um, my desk is a mess with shit. I think I've got everything I need. Yeah. Okay, so there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things to talk about. Eight things. Okay, common tools I, uh, this is just shit I've written down. Uh, common tools I use as an embedded software engineer. So I'm going to try and talk about these. And, uh, yeah, I'll do them in order because I've got them here in order. So these are all tools I use every day. Um, some of these will be tools in a bundle and you can use them individually or in a bundle but the ones that come in a bundle are more expensive so yeah let's just get started so the first tool i use as an embedded software engineer is the multimeter digital multimeter so what is a multimeter this is a multimeter so what it does is you can measure AC voltage, DC voltage, capacitance, it depends on what one you get, but capacitance, check if a diode's working, uh, resistance, or you can test continuity. So continuity is basically if there's a short, and that's what mostly it can be used for, especially if you're doing repairs. So you might be able to hear this, you might not. You can a wee bit. So that's the test if there's a short. Yeah, and then temperature, millivolts, and current. So you can do all that with a multimeter. Multimeters are really common tools used and they're basically a good way of checking if something's working or if let's say something isn't working and you need to check if it's getting voltage. That's the best thing to do is check if it's getting power first and that's how you do it with this. You can measure AC with this but that's just not really it's dangerous so safer just measuring smaller voltages and currents and things like that but that's what it's basically used for it's used for measuring voltage resistance current you can get it to measure temperature you need a wee extra bit for to do that when you would use it it's mostly if something isn't working and you're not sure why this gives you a wee bit of insight into the circuit that you're working on so that's the multimeter next up we have the oscilloscope i'm trying to cover stuff that these first few things will be pretty common tools, but I'll try and cover some tools that maybe people haven't heard of for whatever reason. So the next one is the oscilloscope. Now I've plugged in my main oscilloscope here and I've plugged it in just to show you because it's far easier to show you. I might actually put a, a thing up on screen as well to show you the oscilloscope. Uh, a picoscope oscilloscope which is just a brand of oscilloscopes that you can use over usb and they're really handy for saving space so let's just look at this so there is a wee tester on this oscilloscope and it lets you see if the scope's working fine so if i just show you that it's gonna be really hard to see but basically this is an oscilloscope i don't have help i don't get fucking blown up here with this thing on my shoulder or fucking electrocuted so this is your screen And these are the channels. So there's channel one, channel two. I'm gonna turn one off. You can turn or two off. You can turn channel one off as well, like that. And this is the probe. And this is plugged into like a wee tester port to make sure the probe is okay and the scope's okay. Because sometimes your probes can break. And the whole point of this is multimeters only give you like a snapshot of a digital uh, reading. So if we look here, this tells you the distance and time and the voltage over a longer period so I can change the time difference here and make it shorter so I can see more of the uh, pulses or to see in the on the screen oh there we go that's a bit better but yeah this is basically a way of getting a deeper insight into a circuit and I mostly use this for testing serial communications, so SPI, which is Serial Peripheral Interface, and I2C, which is called Inter-Integrated Circuit, I think that's right. Yeah, it's just a good way of making sure that your signals are going to the right places. So if you're talking to a microchip from a micro- if you're talking to a sensor from a microcontroller, and you're not getting data back, you can use this to make sure that you're getting signal to the sensor properly and that's mostly what i use it for um when shit isn't working there's a pattern here so that's an oscilloscope you can do more stuff with it and the fancier oscilloscopes that cost more money you can do more stuff with them like uh fourier analysis and things like that you can get with them and you can also do uh, other things as well which i'll talk about later as part of this video 
So I'm just going to move this out of the way because it's doing my head in. Okay, that's two things off the list. What next? Dev boards. Dev boards. Obviously, you need a dev board because if you don't have anything to work, if you don't have a dev board or a microcontroller, then you're not really doing embedded software because you don't have anything to embed your software onto, do you? So you need a dev board. This is just one of the many dev boards I have. It's a test Texas Instruments Red Racket. I think it's a Red Racket. No, it's called Launchpad. Excuse me. So it's MSP430 Launchpad. And it's gonna be hard to see, but that's it there. That's one of them. And there's basically pins here and here. That's the microcontroller in the middle. And yeah, you need these because you can get these and you can hook them up to circuits with a breadboard, which I'll talk about next, and test everything, test your code and all before everything goes to be uh, printed on a printed circuit board or the printed circuit board gets made and then everything gets put on it. So that's why you need these, because these are good and quick for prototyping and everything is compatible with a microcontroller, although it should be because everything's standard, but that's why you need them. And uh, they're good just for making shit and having a laugh with because that's what my life consists of just fucking laughing at myself so yeah you need it you need a dev board there's loads of dev boards there's arduino dev boards there's microchip dev boards there's stm30 stm uh dev boards they're all called nucleo boards so yeah you need a dev board now enough about dev boards let's talk about breadboards so breadboards are a way of prototyping as i was saying with your dev board and you can plug, it's kind of hard to see, I'll put loads of pictures and shit up on screen of all this stuff. In the middle, these are connected horizontally and on the edges here, these are connected vertically. And they're basically a way of prototyping uh, your microcontrollers with sensors and things like that. And hooking them all together so you would have their dev board and your breadboard side by side and hook everything up with wires to make sure everything's working again before everything goes to be made and fully manufactured that's what you need to do what else have we got logic analyzer so the, if you get a fancy oscilloscope these can be built into them so logic analyzers are basically a way of actually looking at the signal itself going to a sensor and you're able to actually see the characters you're sending out so if you're sending out hello world over eart you'll be able to see it with the logic analyzer this is just a wee cheap one that i got and um, it shows you the pins you can't see it it shows you the pins and uh, it just says logic analyzer and that's what that's for yes yeah, so next we have a function generator so function generators are basically what i was showing you on the oscilloscope that wee test point that was making the square waves that's a function generator but you you can get fancier ones to do fancier things like sine waves, sawtooth waves, square waves, and loads of funky stuff like that. And they're handy for they are handy for injecting signals to test your hardware. So if you have an analog to digital converter, you can inject a signal and make sure that everything's been converted properly as expected. And it basically allows you to test signals better or test your software with a controlled signal input. So you can actually verify that your software is working properly this is a cheap function generator which i bought and it takes five volt input and i puts it in a, one of them bnc connectors there that's what that is it's bnc connector and it's kind of hard to see but that's it it's not very fancy it's really simple and i bought it and have never used it because generally speaking the good oscilloscopes have function generators built in and they're called arbitrary waveform generators Oh yeah, two more to go. Okay, so terminal software. Uh, I'll put terminal software on the screen now. So on Windows, the terminal software you can use is TerraTerm or RealTerm. And on Linux, I found a really good one that I've used uh, called Qt.com. And basically, they're a way of sending signals out over USB to, a, to your uh, dev board in our case. And the reason you would do that is because if you want to control the dev board without having to hook it up to a debugger, uh, you need to be able to send it signals via the UART, uh, which can, you can get a USB to UART and you can send signals out via that, the terminal software. So you can tell it, you can send it commands basically uh, using a command line interface and ask it to do things for you. So it saves you having to hook up extra stuff or rig loads of buttons together for the buttons to do separate things so that's why you can use that for and then last but not least the programming calculator on windows and linux so in embedded software what we work with is hexadecimal binary and decimal numbers and that's all well and good until you need to communicate it uh, or convert the numbers and also bit shift the numbers and it's mostly used for bit shifting the programming side of it on windows 
lets you change to hex, decimal, octal, or binary. And you can see, you can bit shift uh, the numbers left or right. You can also bitwise the numbers together. And it's just a nice quick way of being able to set and reset bits without having to actually program at all or use Excel. So it's a nice quick way of being able to do it. So that's that. That's all the tools I use every day. Obviously not all at once. The most common one is the terminal software, then probably the programming calculator, and then the oscilloscope, and then the rest just as and when required. So hopefully that was useful for someone. Hopefully someone discovered something new that they can use in their life, and hopefully someone got something out of that. So that's me. I'm going to go lose the head at someone making loads of noise in my house. So bye.